Hello everyone, this is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training. Thank you for joining me today. Today's module will be looking at the reclosable ball activated frac seams. Before we get started, if you're new to the video blog and you want to catch up on previous posts, be sure to go to the website uogtraining.com and go into the blog tab. And if you're familiar with the website and you're enjoying it and you'd like to keep up with it, then be sure to go to uogtraining.com, go to the email sign up tab, and you can sign up to receive email communications on new video blogs and other events that we have. Also, if you're not familiar with ball activated completions or refracturing, I do recommend you going to the blog tab and looking at these two modules so that this module will make a little bit more sense. Traditional ball activated completion systems use open hole packer isolation to isolate the annulus between the casing and the well bore that you've drilled. So you see the open hole packers here, they're spaced out between the sleeves, and that'll provide your isolation you need for multi-stage fracturing. Now most service companies have adopted some sort of sleeves that will allow cement isolation as well. So you run these sleeves into the well bore, and then you pump cement through the casing and out into the annulus, uh, and that provides your annual isolation. Whichever isolation method you use, the fracturing process is exactly the same. You open the sleeves one at a time, and then you drop the balls that corresponds to your next sleeve, and you fracture them in consecutive order. Now this looks the same, exact same, as you, you see with a traditional frac sleeve operation. The reclosable frac sleeve doesn't play any part of your primary fracture. There is something to consider though if you're using cemented sleeves in your primary frac application. In cementing operations, you pump cement down your casing, and as you're finishing up pumping your cement, you always have to pump a cement wiper plug through the casing, and that wipes the cement out of the casing and pushes all of it into the annulus and ensures that you don't leave cement behind in your casing. And it's no different for cementing through ball activated frac sleeves but you have to consider that you're pumping your cement through the ball sleeves and you're still going to have that cement wiper plug and it has to be able to collapse when it goes through those ball seats and it has to be able to pass through without opening that sleeve prematurely during the cementing job and dumping all your cement back in your casing. <clears throat> so that is a port an important factor cons to consider when designing your primary frac because you may not be able to get a traditional 40 to 50 stages like you would in an open hole application. That diameter restriction may limit you to 20 to 25 stages depending on uh, the diameter restrictions. The primary difference is going to be in the refracturing application. So we've got our well here, it's been fractured, uh, the sleeves have been produced through, and you once you're ready to refracture, you go in, you mill out the ball seats, and once those ball seats are milled out, you have a nearly full bore diameter through your casing. You go in with coil tubing tools, you can latch into each of the sleeves, and you can reclose them one at a time. You go back through your well bore, reclose every sleeve, and once they're reclosed, you have a completely isolated liner again, and that's what gives you the options for refracturing. Once they're closed, you can go back in, open each one individually, fracture, and then reclose it. And you do have to reclose it so that you maintain that isolation in the in your casing. You move up to the next sleeve, you open that sleeve, refracture, close it to maintain isolation, and then you just repeat that process until all the sleeves are fractured in the well bore. And once they're fractured, you go back in, you open them all for production. There is another alternative you can do uh, because you've isolated that casing string or that liner. Uh, by reclosing the sleeves, and that is to do a plug and perf job in that uh, existing well. So if you want to fracture new stages in your refract job, you go in, you perforate between the sleeves somewhere, and you fracture, set a plug above it to isolate, perforate again between sleeves, fracture, plug, perf, and fracture until all of your stages are complete. Once you finish the frac job, you go in and mill out the plugs, you can put your well on production, but if you do this method, you have punched permanent holes in the casing, so you're, if you're wanting to refracture again after that, your options are going to be limited. And once again, go back to that refracturing 
video blog to see what kind of options you have with uh, permanent holes in your casing for refracturing. Well, that's all for today's video module. Thanks again for joining me. This is Aaron Burton with Unconventional Oil and Gas Training. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out in any of the ways here, either by email or through social media or the comment bar below. And uh, once again, subscribe to our email list if you're interested in uh, knowing more about uh, new video blogs and upcoming events. Thank you. And have a great day.